Hello, this is Artie Vagabond Jerry, and I am back in my bathroom today, and I wanted to talk about showering. And even though I am in my robe, I, you can rest assured that I will not be demonstrating showering to you. So what I wanted to talk about in showering in a motorhome or travel trailer or fifth wheel, whatever you have, most likely you have a shower inside of your RV, like this one. It's ordinary shower. And the big issue about showering is water heating. And my motorhome has a water heater that is has two different ways of heating up the water. It has a gas water heater and an electric water heater. It's, it's all just one water heater, but it has two different heating methods in that water heater. And somewhere in your RV you will find switches to turn on the gas water heater and to turn on the electric water heater. And depending on whether you prefer to use gas or water at the time, so which one you choose to heat it with. And also, in mine, and probably in most RVs, you can use the gas and the electric water heater at the same time and heat up your water twice as fast. I've never found that to be necessary. I've always used the gas water heater, unless I'm plugged into outside electricity in an RV park where I'm just getting a deal whether it's all you can eat electricity, then I'll use my electric water heater. <clears throat> but with my gas water heater, I have found that it only takes about 15-20 minutes of heating up my 10 gallon water heater to give me enough hot water for a shower. And <clears throat> when I turn on the hot water all the way, it doesn't get really, really hot because I don't give it enough time to heat up the water to where it is really getting steaming hot. By turning the hot water on as far as it will go hot, it's really just warm enough to shower to where it feels comfortable. You don't need it super hot and then mix the hot water with the cold water. That's just not efficient. So by heating up your hot water only 15 or 20 minutes, that heats it up just enough to where it's warm enough to take a shower with just using the water from the hot so that you're not mixing hot and cold. You don't need to do that much heating. Now, I don't know how other RVs function as far as water heating goes and how long you have to turn the water heater on to get it to warm up enough. But I have been so happy with mine is that it only takes 15 or 20 minutes. And if I'm only taking a shower once or twice a week or maybe even every other day, I don't want to leave it on all the time. You leave that hot water heater on all the time and <laughs> that's going to get very expensive in propane. So I only turn it on for 15-20 minutes before I use it. And then, just before I get into the shower, I turn the water heater off. If I leave it running while I'm showering, then as more water is coming into the water heater, it's going to be heating up that water, which I don't need heated up, because I just do not not needing that much water. So, you want to remember to turn your hot water heater off, just before you get into the shower. So it won't be heating up more water that you're not going to use. Now, there is another type of hot water heater that is it's a tankless. 
And there is a slow trend in RVs of putting in tankless water heaters. I think they cost a little bit more than your standard gas electric water heaters. So I think it's been kind of slow getting in, but I wish I had one because with a tankless, it heats up water just as it runs through it. It just like heats up water instantly. So you, there's no warm up time. You could turn it on and then within a half a minute, you've got warm water in your shower and you only use it as long as you're showering. And then that way you're not heating up any water that you're not going to be using. And I do do that because I have a 10 gallon water heater. It's heating up 10 gallons and I doubt if I use even half that. I'm sure I use less than half that in taking a shower. So if you have a choice of getting a regular 10 gallon or so water heater or a tankless, I would suggest getting a tankless. And I'm kind of looking forward to the day that uh, my gas water heater goes out and I got to replace it. When that happens, I guarantee you I will be replacing it with a tankless water heater. And one more thing I wanted to tell you is that if you ever get a crack in your shower enclosure like this, <laughs> just um, my shower door here is a three piece shower door and it fell off of the tracks and it fell down. The door actually fell down against here and hit right there. So it gave me about an inch wide crack. If you ever get any kind of a crack in your shower enclosure, and by the way, I found <laughs> from doing that, that this shower enclosure, it, the, this material is about as thick as an eggshell. It really amazed me. I swear it's not much thicker than an eggshell. So it's very sensitive. You hit anything with it very hard, it can crack. So if that ever happens, this is what you want to get. Tub and shower repair kit. Now you can get the pieces to it, but the most convenient way is to get this tub and shower repair kit. I bought mine on Amazon. It says professional results in minutes. And I've only used it once, and I did that just a couple days ago. And it worked very well. However, <clears throat> I got one more step of sanding it down. You can see it's really chunky there. And it, the kit does come with sandpaper, but I'm going to get one of those sanding drills. I have an electric drill and I want to get one of the bits that is it's uh, a sanding bit because I'm afraid that's going to take a little too much elbow grease to really sand that down with sandpaper. So remember the tub and shower repair kit. So I hope to you have learn something especially if you're shopping for an RV the important thing about showering is what kind of water heater that you have so there you go good day folks